Today, we're going to talk about condition taste aversion and John Garcia's classic experiment called the Tasty Bright Noisy Water Experiment. Stay tuned. You've probably heard of classical conditioning, such as the example of Pavlov's dogs. A neutral stimulus, or CS, conditioned stimulus, is paired with a biologically important stimulus, or a unconditioned stimulus, US, which causes a natural response, or unconditioned response, a UR. So the CS is paired with the US, which leads to a UR. After pairing the CS and US together, such as the sound of a metronome ticking being paired with food, eventually the metronome CS by itself will generate a new learned behavior or a conditioned response, CR. One of the big questions during the early part of the 20th century was trying to discover the rules that underlie this process. There were a couple of things that psychologists, especially the early behaviorists, had discovered. First, we knew that behavior is shaped predominantly by the environment. That is, your behavior is mostly due to your experiences. Learning to associate stimuli with outcomes, good or bad, in the environment. We also knew that it takes several pairings of CS's and US's uh, before you get learning. Now the pairing has to happen together in time and space. In other words, they have to be paired contiguously. In general, no more than a few seconds can elapse between the CS and the US or you won't get learning. And finally, all potential CS's should be more or less equal. That is, they should be able to be associated with a US. Lights, sounds, flavors, odors, it really shouldn't matter too much. The hero of our story this week is John Garcia. He was a first generation American who was born and raised on the family farm. And throughout his young life, he had many jobs. He was a farmer, obviously, a cartoonist. Uh, he became an 18 wheeler mechanic. Uh, he was a high school teacher, among other things. During World War II, Garcia built submarines for the US Navy and afterward enlisted in the Army Air Corps to become a pilot. Garcia had a problem though, which is that he developed persistent nausea from flying. And so that kept him grounded so he finished his military career as a military intelligence specialist. When he left the service, he was able to use the GI Bill to go to college. In his late 30s, he eventually graduated from UC Berkeley with his PhD. Because of Garcia's unique background, he always felt like he brought a sort of real world perspective to the ivory tower of universities and the bureaucracy of politicians and policymakers. His first job after he finished his PhD was with the Navy uh, doing radiological research. Now to give you some context, this was in 1955 and the world was living in the shadow of the mushroom cloud. Understanding the lasting impact of nuclear technology was critical. So Garcia's job was to expose rats to radiation and look at the effects. He noticed when doing his experiments that rats wouldn't drink from the plastic water bottles after radiation exposure. He suspected that the rats felt sick from radiation poisoning and that caused them to learn to associate the plasticky flavored water from the bottles with the illness. To test this, he provided rats with a saccharin solution that they usually love to drink, uh, but then he exposed them to radiation. And sure enough, even after a single pairing, the rats would learn to avoid that sugary flavored water and drink less of it compared to a group that wasn't irradiated. Oddly enough, they didn't seem bothered by the compartment where the radiation was delivered, only the flavor. So this suggested to Garcia that maybe not all stimuli are equally associable. This led to a fantastically well-designed experiment. Sometimes we call this experiment the tasty, bright, noisy water experiment. Rats drink saccharin solutions from a special apparatus such that every lick gave them a little bit of saccharin, but also flashed a light in their face and made a clicking sound. So therefore there were two kinds of stimuli that could be learned about, taste and audiovisual. Once rats were drinking the water, Next, they were divided into two groups. 
One group would receive electric shocks while they're drinking. The other group would receive radiation treatment just after drinking. They would bring the rats in the next day and they would give them a choice between plain water and the saccharine water. While they were drinking one or the other water, the lights and clicks would occasionally come on. Now, all rats had received the same condition stimuli. The only difference was that the U.S. that had been paired with it was different, either illness or shock. Now think about what most learning theorists at that time would have thought. They would have predicted that both shocks and illness are negative outcomes, and therefore all rats should learn to avoid the flavor and stop drinking when the lights and sounds come on, since all those stimuli were paired with negative outcomes. However, Rats that received irradiation would not drink the saccharin flavor, but they would drink regular water fine. There was no effect when the lights and sounds came on. The rats just ignored them. On the other hand, the rats that received electric shocks drank the saccharin solution without issue, but would freeze whenever the lights and sounds came on, even if they were drinking just plain water. Think about what this means. First of all, Rats can learn a taste aversion in a single pairing. You don't need multiple pairings like we thought at that time you needed. Second, rats could learn a long-lasting aversion even if the CS and US were spaced far apart in time. Instead of presenting things together for a few seconds, he could present the radiation and the flavor hours apart and still get learning. And third, this showed that some stimuli are more likely to become associated together than others are. And not only that, this happens in a biologically meaningful way. Organisms are predisposed to learn that audiovisual stimuli are associated with pain and taste stimuli are associated with illness. Think about it. In nature, how often does it go the other way around? Is it likely that a light or sound would make you sick? So we evolved predispositions for learning to associate some kinds of stimuli together. How was Garcia's clever experiment received? Well, at first, people didn't believe him, especially behaviorists, because it broke all the rules that they had worked so hard to establish. But the good news is his procedure was so simple and his experiment was so well designed, it was really easy for other labs to replicate. So soon it became an established phenomenon. And this changed the way we view learning. It showed that there are biological constraints on learned behavior. It illustrated the importance of the organism's natural history and cemented the importance of evolution on behavior, even learning. We now know this phenomenon that Garcia described as conditioned taste aversion, or as it's sometimes called, the Garcia effect. I hope this exploration into Garcia's experiment has been helpful. We've got more videos on the way, and until next time, keep thinking. Isn't it ironic that the guy who had to leave his pilot career because of persistent nausea made a career out of studying persistent nausea.